TF2 is a game where, after waiting and finally getting into a match, you immediately die off spawn to a random spy in your backlines. It contains all the features of a game named TF2, you play as a team of varying size, you try and defend something that technically counts as a fortress, and you can go for about two matches before you find a team of bots with aimbot that don't give you a fun time. Despite being older than probably a lot of people watching this video, TF2 still has a pretty active player base, and full matches are easy enough to find. That doesn't make the game easy to learn, though. But as someone with five whole hours in the game, I feel like I am uniquely qualified to give you the rundown on the game. TF2 contains nine unique classes, each with their own set of weapons and abilities. First, we have the Soldier. You know, the one who can't see. Luckily, I'd trust a blind man with an RPG any day, so it's not the end of the world. He also has a shotgun, which for some reason is the weapon that a bunch of classes have in common. The devs really said, You know what these classes needed as secondary? A shotgun. Next up we have the Heavy, who is notable for, uh, being heavy. Big Sasha spins, and it leads to easy wins, when you don't even have to do anything but point your gun at the enemy and let your medic do all the work. Speaking of which, the medic. As the only one who can heal your teammates, you kind of have a lot of work to do. You also have an uber charge, which is really the only way you get through some of the major choke points in the game. Throw it on your heavy and watch him mow down the enemy team as you try and convince yourself that you deserve credit for these kills, not him. Next up is the demo man. His primary weapon is the egg launcher from Fortnite, except you can't spam the ammo or else you will only be left with his secondary weapon, the sticky bomb launcher. This weapon gets the I still have no idea how this thing works award, so don't ask me to tell you whether it's good or not. The scout is the mobility character of this game, with a high speed and a double jump. All you need to do is dodge the enemy team's bullets and shotgun them to the face. Which is easier than it sounds. The scout feels like he should be the most fun character in the game, at least for me, as I'm a big fan of mobility characters, but something about him just doesn't feel right. Instead, I main the sniper, which is probably the most self-explanatory of the classes. You have sniper rifle, sniper rifle go boom. Do note though that you have to charge up the rifle by ADSing, which is something I failed to notice until about three hours after I started playing him, which is just kinda sad. On to the engineer. His design's pretty unique. He sets up teleporters, turrets, and ammo stashes, and he can upgrade each of these to make them severely overpowered. Your entire job is to not play the game and make sure your team doesn't either. But what if, instead, you wanted to make sure that the enemy team was the one not playing the game? That is the expertise of the spy. Bro literally just turns invisible and one-shots you. Best spawn camper in the game, and it's not even close. Last but not least, we have the pyro, which, I mean, do I really need to explain? Yeah, it's pretty much what you'd expect. Now that we're done looking through the characters, we can look through the actual gameplay of TF2, which is probably my favorite part. You see, I'm a sucker for tactical FPSs, and TF2 does not disappoint in that regard. With all these different classes, the amount of different strategies and comps you have is crazy, with the only limiting factor being the number of friends you have to play with. Which can sometimes be a very limiting factor. The solo queue experience isn't that bad though. Casual has auto-balancing, which basically means that the game will switch people's teams when the player counts on each side are unbalanced. There's also solo carry potential, which is something I always look for in games like this, as teamwork can easily fall into the too much of a good thing trap. As for the available game modes, Casual has a good mix, including your standard cart push and control point modes. Competitive is something that I haven't unlocked yet, so I'm just going to say that it's probably fine and move on. I haven't had enough time with the maps to tell you which ones are good or not, but they should really let you see the objective through walls. It's incredibly confusing when you get backfield into a game and spawn in with no idea whatsoever as to which way you have to go. Alert. Our control point is being captured. Although to be fair, I don't really know how much onboarding is needed for a game that's legally considered a teenager. But with all that out of the way, let's jump into a new segment for videos like this. Introducing... The... Epic... E echelons. Epic Echelons, that, that's gonna be the name. This tier list is the only one optimized for players with zero hours in the game. And people who are just bad. We're gonna start off with the demo man. Let's put him in a solid B tier. He's pretty good, although I feel like you could use some more ammo. To me, grenade launchers don't feel like grenade launchers unless you're able to spam them, but you just don't have enough ammo to do that here. Other than that though, he has enough damage to be viable. Next is the engineer, who I'll put in A tier. 
As someone who can't aim, being able to put up something else that can aim for you is very helpful, and the current kinda does insane amounts of damage. I'm gonna put Heavy in S tier. TF2 is definitely a game that you can spray and pray in, and with Medic Pocket, it is really hard for you to die. I'm also gonna put Medic in S tier as well for the same logic. The Pyro, I think, is the only other class that deserves S tier. I mean, he's just so easy to play. You walk around, you hold down left click, and you get kills. It's quite simple. The scout goes in D tier. His tiny amounts of health is a major drawback, especially considering that all the top classes don't need to aim whatsoever. Unless you're 1v1ing a sniper, I'd stay away from the scout. The sniper is a weird one as his usefulness stems entirely from whether you're able to aim. But let's be honest, I can't aim and neither can you. C tier. I'll put the soldier in C tier as well just because he doesn't do anything super well. He's a jack of all trades in a game that rewards being really good at the couple of things and just having your teammates do the rest. Finally, we have the Spy, which I'm going to put in B tier. He's not the easiest to play, but if you can learn how to sneak past people, you can just kind of spawn camp the enemy team and there's not a whole lot they can do. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. Be sure to subscribe and leave a like for the human players in our lobbies. And maybe the non-human ones as well.